Okay, we're going to read chapter 10 of Because of the Rabbit, but let's talk about chapter 9 first. Um, remember, chapter 9 is when she had her great idea to invite everybody over, but then um, it didn't work out that good because um, she didn't know the rules about people going home with other people about a note and all that stuff. So, um, the only one who can come is Jack. Okay. So chapter 10 is, uh, rabbits have scent glands under their chins. They rub their chins on things to claim them as their own. When I got home, mom told me that Owen had texted. He made the soccer team. Now he'll probably pra have practice every day. That's great, I said flatly, unpacking my backpack. I could smell that she'd been baking something yummy. What smells so good? Mom grinned. I bake chocolate chip cookies. How many kids are coming over today? Only Jack, I said. Thanks so much for making cookies, though. And can I borrow your phone? I'll need it to make a video. Mom nodded. Sure, it's on the counter. I put her phone in my pocket. Um, just so you know, I said, feeling like I should warn her. Jack's a little bit different. I think he might have some special needs. Different makes life more interesting, Mom said. I nodded, though that seemed like one of those easy things people say to gloss over hard parts. He especially likes to talk about animals. Just like you, Mom said. Even more than me, I said. In fact, if there were a TV game show where all the categories were animals, Jack would be a millionaire. But when Jack and his mom arrived, I was surprised that he stepped back as Molly and Maggie came over barking and wagging tails. Girls, Mom said sharply to the dog, go lie down. As Molly and Maggie trudged to their beds, Jack's mom said softly, it's a sensory thing. Jack loves to read about animals, but in real life they can be overwhelming. No problem at all, Mom said. Can I make you a cup of tea or coffee while the kids do their homework? Tea would be lovely. I'll put the kettle on, Mom said. Make yourself at home, and if you'd like to wash your hands, the bathroom is through that door. But no frogs in there, Jack said sadly. Mom laughed. Oh, Emma told you about those? You're right. We don't have frogs in the bathroom regularly. That was just a homeschool science project. The frogs grew up, and we let them go in the pond where we found the eggs. Um, let's go work in my room, Jack, I said quickly to change the subject. My rabbit's in there, but he only makes quiet sounds. I got a piece of kale and a few blueberries from the fridge for Lappy and a plate of the plate of chocolate chip cookies for Jack and me. Come on. As we were climbing the stairs, I heard Jack's mom talking to mine in the kitchen. Thank you for having us over. The other kids at school are mostly kind to Jack, but they almost never think to include him outside of school. So this is really nice. It's nice for Emma too, Mom says. She's been hoping for a friend. I felt bad that Jack and I were both getting left out of things. Being left out hurts. I turned to him and rolled my eyes in case he was as embarrassed as I was that our mothers were talking about us. But his eyes were focused on my bedroom door, his fingers flickering at his sides. He looked a little scared. It's okay, I said. Lappy can stay in his pen if you want. When I opened my bedroom door, Lappy immediately put his paws up on the side of the pen, excited to get out and have a run. Later, I promised him, Jack and I have work to do. Lappy thumped his back foot on the floor. Rabbits thump to warn other rabbits about danger, Jack said. Usually, I said, but this rabbit is telling me that he wants to have a run and he's mad that I said no. Jack stared at Lappy, his fingers twitching harder. Let me out of here. <laughs> Did he mean Lappy or himself? Are you okay? I asked. I'm fine, Jack said plainly, without taking his eyes off Lappy. How are you? I smiled. I'm fine too. Lappy thumped his back foot again. He's mad that you said no, Jack said, his eyes bright with excitement. He wants to come out. Was Jack asking me to let Lappy out? Hey, I have an idea, but it's okay if you don't want to. A good idea? Jack asked. Well, you'll get to decide if it's good or not, I said. You could sit at my desk and pull your feet up on the chair. I promise Lappy won't jump up there. He can have a little run around the room and then I'll put the treat in his pen and he'll go back in to get it. Jack didn't look 100% sure, but he sat on my desk chair and put his heels up on the seat. 
As soon as I opened the Pandora, Lappy hopped easily into my, onto my braided rug. His first free hops were always light and dainty. Little front feet, big back feet. Then he'd pick up speed and darting under my bed and out again with long leaps that were so fast, he'd lose his footing and slide on the hardwood floor. Jack gave a high-pitched laugh. He's a wascally wabbit, he said in his Elmer Fudd voice. He sure is, I said. In between hops, Lappy would suddenly stop and rub his chin on something, claiming it. Dresser, mine. Heater, mine. Quilt, mine. Bookshelf, mine. Lappy paused and rubbed his chin on my foot, his whiskers tickling around my flip-flop. You, mine. He's claiming me, I said. Then Lappy suddenly leaped and twisted like all the happiness inside him had exploded and lifted him into the air. He landed facing Jack. That's called a binky. I read about it in the rabbit book I got at the library. It means he's happy. I handed uh, Jack a blueberry. The book also said blueberries are one of their favorite things. Jack threw the blueberry at Lappy's feet. He sniffed it and then ate it up. I should have known he'd love them, I said. My Pepe, Grandpa, right, used to tell a story about how Monsieur Le Pen tricked Monsieur Renard the fox out of his blueberries. What story? Jack asked. I hesitated. It was one thing to remember Pepe's stories or to tell them in our family. It was a whole different thing to tell another kid. I didn't even know it. I didn't, uh, a whole other kid I didn't even know that well. But Jack stared at me waiting. So I took a deep breath. It happened once that Monsieur Le Pen saw Monsieur Renard, the fox, sitting in a blueberry patch, grooming his beautiful red tail before he feasted on all those delicious berries. Foxes are omnivores, Jack said. They eat both plants and animals. Oh. That's good to know, I said. But Monsieur Le Pen has magic and this is a story so don't expect things to stay completely real okay it's a lie jack said matter-of-factly no though i guess if there were only two choices it wasn't true i shrugged stories are somewhere in between do you want to hear it anyway jack nodded yes as lappy chinned the leg of the desk chair jack pulled in his feet tighter his arms wrapped around his legs okay so Monsieur Le Pen said, Oh, Monsieur Renard, your tail is so glorious, but you've missed a spot. Monsieur Re Renard was very proud of his tail. Where, he demanded. What kind of spot, Jack said. Um, pitch, pine pitch. Jack nodded, and I continued. Monsieur Le Pen pointed right there. No, a little more to the right. Almost a little more to the right. Soon Monsieur Renard was turning round and round, spinning so fast, trying to reach the spot that he fell down dizzy. Monsieur Le Pen jumped right into the blackberries and ate them all up. And so it was. I couldn't tell the story as well as Pape, but still it had been fun to share. Lappy went up on his hind legs to look at Jack. Jack let go of his arms. His fingers twitched hard as he slid one foot tentatively toward the edge of the desk chair. I held my breath as Lappy moved his chin across the toe of Jack's shoe. Then he landed his front feet back on the floor and took off again under my dresser. Jack looked over at me, his mouth open. He claimed you, I said. Jack kept his feet up on my desk chair, but his hands stopped twitching. Let's touch him. You want to touch Lappy? I asked, surprised. Only his back. Okay, but he doesn't like to be picked up, I said. So sit on the floor and I'll put a blueberry next to you. As soon as Lappy came over for the blueberry, Jack reached out one trembling hand, three quick, barely there touches. I waited for Lappy to hop away, but he didn't. He likes you, I said. Maybe because your name sounds like a rabbit, too. Jack Rabbit. Jack Rabbits are really hares. Jack reached out and patted Lappy again, so lightly that I couldn't tell if he actually touched Lappy's body or just the very tips of his fur. Monsieur Le Pen, he whispered, and Jack Rabbit. Dun, dun, dun. Tomorrow, 11. Rabbits don't consider breed, age, or size when choosing a friend to bond with. So don't, they don't care how old or they are. Okay, bye-bye.